to Make Him Wonder with Coach Paula Grooms, where women struggling in real relationships ask the expert. Unscripted, unfiltered, understandable coaching conversations to help passionate women succeed in love. Back from episode 22 is my very good and wonderful friend, Wonder Woman Aaron, Hey, Aaron. Hey, Coach Paula. <laughs> oh, that's funny when you call me that. That's, that's, that sounds funny coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'm happy to do this today. It's really fun because you are the really the perfect person to speak about this, not only because you have done something that so many women come to me about, and that is taking a man that you really want to be with. You started in second category. And guys, if you haven't heard episode 22 of the first season of Make Him Wonder, you've got to hear our discussion because, Aaron, it was fun, right? We, we really went over our whole history together. Yeah, it was fun. And it, I can't you know, I believe it was so long ago. I know, right? But I recommend, like, friends do that because when you kind of, it was like this walk down memory lane that we would not have done had we not done the podcast. That's true. I really liked that uh, because it, it, I don't know about you, but it made me feel like, oh, I've come really far. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, that my relationship has come really far, but also that each of us had come really far. Our relationship has come really far, but also that each of us had come really far, like, you know, personally and, you know, as friends. Our friendship had grown as well. Exactly. That, that was another, yeah. It was really nice, yeah. So, like I said, if you haven't heard that, go to season one of Make Him Wonder and you will hear our journey together, how... Oh my gosh, you helped me so much with uh, like the puppy principle and all of that. And that was fun to explore because how we did that and um, just it's, it's really fun. So listen if you can. And then we come up to date with it was a previous relationship of mine and your current relationship. And if you can kind of outline for our listeners like how you started in um, second category and you've made it to today whereby you guys are amazing. He's so in love and I love seeing it and you are a real success story in that way. Well, thank you. I, I certainly wouldn't be here uh, without your help over all the years too. I, I have to say that. Um, but uh, yeah, so he and I met... Um, actually more than five years ago now. And really, as I said earlier in the episode 22, I really just planned to, you know, have fun with him and that was going to be that. And so I definitely, although he reached out first, uh, I certainly was in the whore category and he was really happy about that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) You were going to move, weren't you? Like you didn't even plan on staying. And so it made a lot of sense. Like, and you were off just off of a really difficult, really kind of almost traumatic relationship in a way. Right. Yeah. Toxic. Toxic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so you're right. I, I had planned to move. I was going to move uh, to Tampa, actually. Um, and I met him in April. I was planning to move in August. And he knew that from the first, probably I think the first day we met, certainly the second time we met, um, that I was planning on moving and we could hang out and have fun. And that that's all that I was, you know, looking for and open to at the time. But But one thing that was really different about the time that he and I spent together in the very beginning, different than other guys I had just like, you know, hooked up with or had had a short fling with, he really, and I think that's part of his nature, he really just wanted to like learn about me. He's just, he's a type of person that just wants to learn about other people. And as he started to learn about me, he really started to like and appreciate a lot of things about me. So let me ask you, when you say like it was you know, him wanting to find out about you, 
I really want to know, like, that first meeting, and I assume this was from online, right, I, if I remember right. Yes, we met online and then in a in a restaurant. So when you did the online back and forth, his idea was what? We didn't go online back and forth very much at all. Um, he wrote me and... Uh, said, hey, I, you know, and I didn't have a picture up. He, I said, I need a picture from somebody, and if I like your picture, I'll send you my picture. So he sent me his picture, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. And that I definitely did not expect a response from him. Um, but I wrote back and, and sent my picture, and I did not expect a response from him. And then he, as soon as he got my picture, he wrote me right away and said, give me your phone number. I want to call you. What, that's I and mean, wow! Immediately, I'm, I'm just shocked though, Aaron. Why did you think you weren't going to get a response back? Oh, he's just so handsome and like I know. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> he is, yeah, yeah. He totally is. Um, and, you know, and he has these beautiful eyes, and his picture just—I was like, whoa! And you know, in my um, posting or my ad or whatever, I put, "You have to send me a picture, or I will not respond to you." And in his first email to me, he did not send a picture. And up until then, anyone who did not follow my directions, I just deleted them. I did not respond to them. But for whatever reason that day, I just liked some of the stuff that he wrote in his email, I guess. And I thought, okay, well, let's just see. And so I, I said, okay, now send me your picture. And he did. And that's when, you know. And, and once he, you know, I was a little taken aback initially when he was like, give me your phone number. I was like, whoa, he's so bossy. Um, but in a way, I kind of liked it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so I gave him my number, and he called me immediately, and I did not answer because I was busy. And then he texted me right after that and said, tell me what time you're available so I can call you back. It's so interesting because I think that everything you're saying is an eclipse. What do you mean? I call it an eclipse because, like, the Earth goes around the sun, you know, 365 days a year, and then we have these errant eclipses, right? Eclipse of the sun, eclipse of the moon, but they're rare. So what I mean is just rarity. Ah, yeah. And, you know, the fact that you didn't have a picture is really amazing to me because, you know, it's it's... So many women come to me and say, you know, well, I'm not willing to put up a picture, so I don't have any shot at all. And you're mm -hmm. you're an example of that's not the case. Yeah. I, you're right. I didn't. I just was really... I talked in my ad, I talked more about what I could what I was looking for and what I would bring to the table as opposed to what I want from the other person and what I expect them to be and what I'm looking for. I mean, I put a little bit about what I was looking for, obviously, but for the most part, it was, it was about me. You see, that's so, I, to me, so, so important. If you just focus on ourselves, that is the attraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the fact is you didn't even have to, you know, like in my one program, my online uh, to Never Ending Love program, I talk about the, you know, the third step in the program, which is the guy making the phone call to introduce himself. And he was just already there, which is normally we have to kind of maneuver and, and get that to happen. And he just did it. Yeah, he's, he is the type of man where... When he has a goal, he goes for the goal 100% and will continue to, like, adjust his plan until he meets the goal. You know, he's just, he was like, well, what am I going to spend time emailing and texting with you for? Mm -hmm. I want to meet you. So, <laughs> he, so he, he, he said, you know, give me your number. And then, um, <laughs> and then he called. I didn't answer. And then I gave him a time, like, later that evening that I was available he called me exactly at the time I said I was available. We talked for like 15, 20 minutes mm -hmm. um, and made a date to meet. Perfect. And 
And that's, he did. So, that's so perfect. It's just what I recommend, the 15, 20 minutes. I mean, all of it went... Oh, uh, really? I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I do. Absolutely. It should be really no longer than that. You know what you did by your profile, which must be very well-worded, and mm-hmm. not having the picture, you created an enormous amount of wonder in him. Oh, yeah, he was very curious about me. In fact, he had a list of questions for me that he prepared (laughs) prior to the phone call. I'm not kidding. I mean, I'm not lying. (laughs) That is great. That is great. Yeah. Yeah. And and we can't uh, underestimate that wonder part of it. Yeah, I I think you're right. That did make... He said to, to him, I was, you know, kind of a... He, one of the nicknames that he always had for me, like a little bit later in our relationship, was game changer. He always said that I was a game changer. Mm. Um, that that like I was just being who I was, and I had my own plan, and I, you know, I wasn't I wasn't forming anything around him. I was, you know, I was doing me, mm-hmm. and um. And now when I ask him, like, do you think if I'd been, you know, like pursuing you, do you think we'd still end up where we would have ended up where we are now? And he's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, no, we wouldn't. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, we wouldn't. (laughs) No. (laughs) He's like, you're so amazing. Of course we would have. And I'm like, yeah, but one of the things that makes you feel that way about me is because I was so different. He's like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you know, it's funny, though, because they're they're really not, I find, it, it, they can't have that kind of look back in the way that we do because they're coming from their own maleness. They can't even mm-hmm. imagine a, a difference in that. But I really want to know then, okay, let's get to the real nitty-gritty here. You say you started in first category, uh, sorry, second category. Um mm-hmm. What did I mean that night, that first meeting? Did you guys sleep together? What was what? How, how did it go? No, um, I told him in our first conversation that I would not sleep with him the first time I met him. <laughs> I said I don't do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. He was, he was like, okay. Um, and you know what's funny is there were a couple of other guys that I met from that same ad that I told them the same thing, and they weren't interested in meeting me if I wouldn't have sex with them the first time I met them. Was this on the website like, or like was it a regular? Um, I think this was um, like Plenty of Fish, which I think is sometimes a hookup site. I, uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. But um, where was I going with that? What was my train of thought? Uh, that you, um, uh, that other guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I told him that I wasn't going to have sex with him the first day we met. And he said, okay, that's fine. Um, so it was the second day. <laughs> second time that we met um, all right so tell us how it went from there so second time you meet you do have sex um mm-hmm. i assume it was really good like what was your thoughts how did it kind of go forward from there it was it was great and he was very um like he just wanted to please me and for you know, everything to, to be about me. And he, it was like, he was like, you know, drinking me in, you know what I mean? He was so like captivated. Mm. Um, and I was, which made me feel awesome. Of course, you know, who doesn't, you know, like to feel like that. Um, and he, then we started hanging out. I which really, you know, you know, means hooking up, um, (laughs) um, probably about once a week for the first like month. And then it got to be maybe two or three times a week. Um, But there were some, and and throughout that whole time, I was certainly, you know, the second category in his eyes. But there were some things going on with his life that he needed to get squared away before I really could see us being in, in any type of relationship. And I told him that as long as, it felt really good to me for him to come around that I would let him keep coming around. (laughs) And when it started to not feel good, that's when we wouldn't do it anymore. And he said, okay. And so the first time that 
I felt really, really bummed out that he was leaving. And, you know, I don't remember something didn't go the way we planned or whatever it was. I was like, okay, that's it for me. Oh, you said that? It doesn't feel good anymore. Yeah, I said it doesn't feel good anymore. Remember? And I told you that if it didn't, when it didn't feel good anymore, we weren't going to do this anymore. Well, it doesn't. So I don't think we're going to do this anymore. And what did he do? He cried and he told me he loved me and please don't do this. And I had asked you, we talked about this in episode 22. I, I asked you like, oh my God, what do I do? Um, and you said you have, to, you have to cut off all contact. And I was like, what? Oh my God. <laughs> and you were like, no, you have to do that. You don't return. He's going to email you. He's going to cry. He's going to text you. He's going to tell you he loves you for the first time. He's going to do all these things, and you have to ignore him. And that's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. He cried. He told me, I was like, oh, my God, Paul is so smart. Um, <laughs> he he smart. cried. He told me he, he loved me. Um, but you knew. You knew the exact right thing to do. And even now, if I ask him about that, he'll, he'll tell me, oh, my God, you weren't writing me back. It was horrible. It was mm -hmm. brutal. It made me crazy. Like, mm -hmm. he still, that stands out to him. Um, and that's and the beauty. Sometimes, yeah, and sometimes he'll say something, like if somebody is annoying him or he's trying to decide if he's going to like keep a friendship or something, he'll be like, well, maybe I should just not return any of their calls or text <laughs> like you did. But, and then we'll see what happens. Like he still even brings it up. <laughs> yeah, it's so profound to the guy. And it's really great because when you are in a relationship, now that you've been, you know, five years, if anything should go wrong, you know, and and he not please you, quote unquote, I mean, in the relationship realm, he knows that feeling and he knows what he could lose. That is a very good point. Yes, he, he knows does. that you have the ability to do that. And it it's not about frightening. It's just really kind of keeps the man on the straight and narrow path. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful. It will always bode well for you. But I remember at the time, it is so difficult to do. Oh, it was brutal. Because I, I, I loved him too, but of course I didn't tell him that back. Right. And I, I missed him. But I said, you know, you got to get yourself together before you can be a constant in my life and when you do then you reach out to me and wow. so a couple of months went by and he called me and he texted me he never emailed me but um he reached out to me a bunch of times and I ignored him every single time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was horrible but it worked <laughs> <laughs> boy did it work um yes. yeah it sure did but you know just circling back about the whole Madonna whore thing I I was a a whore in our relationship for a long time for the probably the first couple of years he and he didn't even realize that he was putting me in that category but sometimes he would just say things that I don't, and I can't even give a good example but like say things a little bit sideways about you know a previous relationship I had or something you know a little bit snarky or like you know some type of question about about sex or whatever and I, and it was in those moments that I I actually would sometimes hear you in my head <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know that like and I would tell him you know they say that if you start the relationship as the whore you can never be anything else and I would say that to him and I would say and you're proving my point you're proving them you're proving that right because no matter what you're still going to come back to how we met and why we met and that's not fair because I'm a lot more than that. And he and I talked about it. You know, I, I always called him out on it when he, um, you know, had that kind of behavior or said something, whatever. Um, and I eventually I told him, this is something that is going to end our relationship. Because mm -hmm. I, you know, it, it's a double standard. And, you know, they say a guy wants, what do they say, a freak in the... the a lady in the street and a freak in the sheets or something like that. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a little similar in a way, right? 
Yeah. Um, and I'm like, you know, if you want that, if you want this great sex and chemistry that we have, you have to, and you, you want that on an ongoing basis. You have to accept that as a part of me, but also there's this Madonna part of me too. That's like totally awesome. Mm-hmm. And I'm that whole, I am the whole person and you have to take me the whole person that I am. You can't just keep like diminishing me to just this like whore to have sex with. What did he say during those? And what was his, demeanor like because for most male brains it just does not compute well one thing one way that I'm lucky is that uh, my guy loves to talk and process things Mm. (laughs) so he wants to talk about feelings he wants to know what my feelings are about something and I just tried to you know (laughs) I just kept pointing out to him all the the ways that he was almost like reinforcing it to himself that I was this, this sex bunny or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And when did you feel, or did you feel there was like a tipping point or a change? Do you remember a moment like that? Or was it just sudden, you know, like slowly, I should say, you know, over time, was there any big change? It was more slowly over time, um, but one we've had a couple of you know tough spots in our relationship, and one of them was right when we were moving in together. And I think that he, at that time, still he almost had me in both categories. I think looking back, and he was kind of struggling with that, like how can somebody be both? You know. Of um, course. Mm-hmm. And he went through my phone. I remember that. Uh huh. Yes. And I, I tell you, we've lived together for three years, and I still don't think I'm 100 percent over it. Mm. <laughs> but that's a different podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, different yeah, episode. That. Yeah. Um, but from and and from the really honest and open conversations we had about what he found in my phone. I think I was, you know, I just kept explaining to him the ways I guess that he was like shortchanging me and our relationship by putting me in the category. And he would always say, I don't do that. I don't do that. I don't think you're just a whore. I don't think that. And I'd say, yeah, but when it comes down to it, you're treating me that way, and here's how you're doing that. If you don't want, if you don't think of me that way, then don't say these things anymore. Don't act this way anymore. Um, and eventually, and so, and then when he went through my phone, that was, I guess, the second time in our relationship that he felt like I could really leave him. Mm-hmm. And we, were, it was like right when we were moving in together too. And I was like, are you trying to self sabotage here? Like, what is going on? Um. But anyway. So uh, he didn't trust, and that's why he went through the phone? Yeah. Yeah, he thought I was... He just he wasn't sure, and he'd just been feeling really paranoid. And I had gotten a new phone, and so he went through my old phone. Uh, but it was, you know, I had just gotten the new phone. So it was, like, practically up to date. Um, and I had actually... Months earlier, I had felt like maybe he was looking through my phone, and so I had used my work phone to set up a fake conversation that I knew he'd, if he read it, he'd have to ask me about. There's no way he'd be able to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> and that's how I found out he went through my phone, because he found that conversation, and he was so upset that he could not hold it in and, and pretend like he didn't read it. And it was so fake? I, he, it was fake. He was like, you tricked me? I'm like, you went through my phone? Right. <laughs> I remember this. That was a really tough. And then you actually, you two did make the move. And for the first little while, it was really touch and go, right? Yeah, because of because him going through my phone. And it just made me, you know, he, th- there's a, a, a person from my past, that a relationship from my past that I was, at the time, was still in touch with. And he felt like I was, 
betraying our relationship by still being in touch with this person. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, but he did. And so that was like, you know, what he says he found out about in my phone. Like, you know, he was so betrayed by, by the fact that I was still in touch with this person. So, Which unfortunately reinforced the whore thing in his mind, right? Because of course a whore would have someone, <laughs> someone on the side. You of know. course, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I really want to know then, like, was it the conversations, or you say over time you kept showing him? And I have to say, you know, because people come to me, women come to me all the time about this and about they've started in the second category and they want to move to first. Here's what I tell them all the time. This is a marathon, not a sprint. You yeah, you got to play the long game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there's no guarantee. No, there's not. But I think the way that you do it is you really play by the rules, you set your boundaries, Mm -hmm. you play for yourself, not for the relationship and not for him, but for yourself, Mm -hmm. and you just, you be consistent in that. Um, Amen. Consistent in your message. That's the biggest one. That is the biggest one. You can never waver. I I talk about this a lot um, in terms of, uh, interestingly, interestingly enough, it goes kind of along with my puppy principle. And I learned this when I was concurrently working with, and you'll appreciate this, Erin, um, working with, as a social worker, uh, people who had Uh, severe uh, developmental disabilities and perhaps a um, concurrent mental health issue. So unfortunately these folks were struck with a lot and I worked with us under a specialist and got training by him. He was amazing on how you deal with folks who are developmentally disabled in terms of having them do what will be, you know, best for them. And at the same time, um, my ex and I had a uh, golden retriever puppy that we were training. And we hired a special trainer. And so the two came together in such a huge way to make such a huge impact on me. And basically what it is that with people, you have to do uh, consistent reinforcement, never intermittent. So it's exactly what you're saying, that over time you never wavered from the one message and you showed it. That's consistent reinforcement. It's exactly the opposite with animals when you're training animals. So with the doggy, every time you say, you know, Rover, uh, sit. When you first start, when they're a puppy, you have to give absolute consistent reinforcement, meaning every time you say sit, you have to have the treat. But then over time, you have to do intermittent reinforcement, meaning they won't know when you're going to give the treat And I remember asking the trainer, well, that doesn't make sense to me. And he said, no, here's what animals do. That if you continue over time to give Rover the treat every time he sits, guess what will happen? He'll stop doing it. I'm like, why? (laughs) That doesn't make any sense to me. He said, because they figure if they want it, they'll sit. If they don't, they'll figure they just get it next time. It's the not knowing what time they're going to get it that makes them continue to do it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. It's it's just fascinating. So with people, we have to never intermittently reinforce because with, say, like a child at the checkout line, mommy, I want the candy, mommy, I want the candy, and, the, and then he ramps it up by uh, throwing a tantrum and she buys it. She just intermittently reinforced 
and now he knows that by ramping things up, he can get what he wants. So he'll continue to test it. And to get back to consistent reinforcement is seriously tough. Yeah. It's just like, you know, when you start the relationship with a man by making the first move. You, you can't ever undo that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it reminds me of this client I used to have. Um, it was so funny. Uh, so she had a little dog. And whenever anybody would come and visit, the little dog would go crazy and start barking and barking and barking like a maniac. And how did she make him stop bur- stop barking? She gave him a treat. Oh, gosh. And I'm like, you're teaching him how to get the treat by g- giving him a treat every time. Absolutely. But she did, She didn't really understand that. She just really wanted him to be quiet. Exactly, yes, <laughs> right? Yeah. And And just like her, we can't rush it to our goal, which is, mm-hmm. in effect, in that analogy, get him to stop barking, meaning put you in the second category. We have to just maintain the first category, keep reinforcing it without any intermittent uh, putting in the second yeah, and that's what you did. And I think it's, I think it's also what com- uh, uh, one thing that comes along with that, or or whatever, is knowing your own value. And I think that I, I knew the value that I was bringing to the relationship. Mm-hmm. And so I just, and I and I would verbalize all these things to him. It's not like these were things I was only thinking. I would say these things to him. You know, and I think that that made a difference, too, that I was often bringing it up to him and he was willing to listen to it. But no matter what, I just, I, 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 I focused on me and what was best for me Mm -hmm. as opposed to what was best for the relationship or what was best for him. And that was something really different than how I had behaved in previous relationships. And I, I remember when we, you and I did this last time, in episode 22, we were laughing about how we had, had made, like, every bad mistake there is to make with dating and with men. Like, mm. every single thing you're not supposed to do, I did it. And I did it with, like, enthusiasm. <laughs> and, Me too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and success, you know, uh-huh. or lack thereof. But, um, yes. Yeah, anyway, I'm getting off track here. But. Well, no question. Yeah, but, but we both did, and, and that's the thing, is that, you know, through that experience and then moving to the other side, so to speak, what I find uh, with your guy is that you could talk, and it didn't erode. It just reinforced what you were doing. And what I yeah, find yeah. with most um, where we make mistakes most is we try to you know use verbalization to relate, and if you don't um, do the uh, the action and consistently show the action, verbalization usually by itself does nothing with men. Mm-hmm. You can talk till you are blue in the face. It will usually not change anything. I think it's a combination of knowing you and your your demeanor. And yes, if you're just standing in your value, you're one of those folks that you can, you know, you can be around and you can look at and you can know that you are just steadfast and solid in who you are. Thank I mean, you. Yeah, you you just are. There's no sense of like you're you are looking outside of yourself to get validation. I have never sensed that from you. I think that that has, I've not always been that way. I appreciate you saying that because I do, I I strive towards that. Mm -hmm. But it's certainly something that I've had to learn and and try to get better at as I've gotten older. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, because there was a time, you know, when I was younger that I, I, I definitely sought validation from, from men or from a relationship. But, you know, I, none of them ever really felt quite right. Hmm. Hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. It just, even if it was someone who was a good guy, mm-hmm. it just didn't feel quite right. And, and I think that's one of the things that was, that was different is that I was thinking more about what was best for the relationship and for him than I was for myself. 
Mm. Mm-hmm. And this was the other way around. You were thinking more, what yeah. would be right for me? And then when we do that, if there mm-hmm. is a, a, a modicum of possibility that he's the right guy, it will work for him. Mm-hmm. And it did. Yep. You know, my, my mom and dad, this is another example, my mom and dad, my mom said she, they lived in California, and my mom said she wanted to go to medical school. And my dad said, well, where do you want to go? And she said, well, I'm going to go here, and if you want to, you can come. (laughs) But it wasn't like, hey, do you want to do this together, or how can we do this together? Because this was very soon after they met. She was like, here's what I'm doing, Mm -hmm. and here's my plan and my goal, and if you want to, you can come along, but I'm still focusing, you know, on my end game. That's right. And he he just, you know, thank you so much because of it. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. and and see we have to do that regardless we have to show that and become that regardless of our feeling in other words if everything in us is saying I want him to come with me right it doesn't change what you must do right. to allow him to feel good about doing it mm-hmm. yeah and that's what's that you know striking that balance well, and I think also, you know, I told him flat out multiple times, this is going to end our relationship. Uh, if you do mm-hmm. not get a hold of how you're, and it wasn't all the time. And, and you know, I don't want anybody to misunderstand. He's, he's, not, he's not a jerk. He's really not. But he would just say something like, you know, if you wanted to ask me a question, he'd be like, so of all the guys that you've slept with, uh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, and I'd be yeah. like, what, what does that even mean? You mean the hundreds or thousands of guys? Or, you know, like, <laughs> why don't you just throw a number in there? You know, like, right. say what you really want to say. Uh huh. Um, and I, I just said, that's going to make me walk away from you. Mm. And mm-hmm. I'm not kidding, but there's going to come a point where I'm not going to be able to handle the way I feel when you talk to me like that anymore. Mm. And I'm going to leave. And that's going to be it. Mm-hmm. And I think he... Be, you know, like you said earlier when I left, you know, and I didn't, I didn't communicate with him, he knew what that felt like. He knew that I would really do it. Mm-hmm. And so he, he, then he, he thought a lot about it. He talked to therapists a little bit about it mm-hmm. and he stopped doing it. Exactly. And he will never, ever forget that feeling. And so he will challenge himself Right? Again, challenge uh, to achieve that state and adhere to what he knows you're looking for so that that doesn't occur. Mm-hmm. I love that. Well, it wasn't easy. It really, really wasn't. And I, I, I really did feel like it was going to end our relationship. Um, and it made me really, you know, really pissed off because here Mm -hmm. I found this great guy in actually a pretty unconventional way for a long-term relationship. You know what I mean? Oh Um, yeah, totally. And he's, he's awesome and we have an amazing connection and now it's going to end because he can't get out of his head that I'm a slut. Like, come on. Mm -hmm. Like that's like such a horrible reason for a beautiful relationship to end. But I said, I'm not going to be talked to this way for Mm -hmm. eternity you know, ongoing anymore. You can't say that stuff to me and you can't think of me like that because if you think of me like that, you just will end up saying stuff. Mm -hmm. If if you feel so deeply in your core that that's what the only thing that I am, then you won't be able to hide it from me long term and and that'll be it. So I guess he believes me. And what I'm hearing (laughs) is it was this two pronged approach, you know, that you took, which was I'm going to show it and stand on my value. And then I'm going to not let these, in other words, you're saying you didn't let these slights, even though they were slight, you didn't let Mm -hmm. them pass by or slip under the rug. I didn't, but I also didn't dwell on it and let it take over the relationship either. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I called him out on it, and we definitely talked about it, but then it's not like then I had a bad attitude at him or I was mad at him for, like, right. a period of time. Yes, yes. 
really significant. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because if I had just gone on and on and then been mad at him and had my feelings hurt and all this stuff for a while, I think he would have just felt like, oh, my God, you know, is she ever going to get over this? No question. You know. So. But also you did something that I like as well because I believe that words have power. And when he had to be thinking about his words it actually fosters a particular feeling and even an intellectualization. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. So I think that it was all of these things combined, and again, we get back to it, and, and this is what I do in my Lure Him In program, because it's with women who either they have started in second category, or they've even when they've started in first and they want to, uh, after a year or two years or whatever it is, they, they don't have commitment because they have to do the hard, hard stuff like you did. It's just, a, it's just a necessity. It, it can't really go any other way with men for long-term success. Mm-hmm. He'll never forget that. It's, I believe, why you, uh, you know, a large part of why, because he just remembers that feeling Mm -hmm. so much and knew you put yourself by doing it as an ultimate prize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thanks for doing this today. Well, you're welcome. I really... I hope it's helpful to someone, someone out there. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Oh, absolutely. Everybody, we need these kinds of success stories. Mm -hmm. It's super important that we know that it's possible. And again, I think the stars aligned here in that uh, knowing your guy, I know how he is a, he's a deep guy. He's a thinking man. He, um, he values the right things, (laughs) you Mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Yeah, he's 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 a really good person. He he is, and he tries to be, you know, the best he can be. And he's he he strives to be better all the time. It's one of the things I admire about him. Yes, yes. So this is great, Aaron. Thank you again. If you haven't listened, uh, check out uh, Aaron's story and mine a little bit. We talk about that in uh, episode twenty-two of the first season of Make Him Wonder. And uh, this was a great talk. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Coach Paula. (laughs) I trust you got a lot of good information from today's video. And I enjoy bringing you content that is valuable for success in your romantic life. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the alert bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you want more on any of the content you see here, you can go to my book, Why Won't He Commit?, how a man decides to make you the one. You can order it at any fine retailer where you get your books. And if you want more on me or any of my programs, my podcast, go to coachpaulagrooms.com and we could be talking soon.